Now entering Nerdist.com. Jackie Cash and Laurie Kilmartin. Jackie Cash and Laurie Kilmartin. It's the Jackie and Laurie Show. The Jackie and Laurie Show. It's the Jackie and Laurie Show. The Jackie and Laurie Show. Hey, welcome to the Jackie and Laurie Show. Hi. Lori Kilmartin. Hi, Jackie. How are you, Jackie Cation? I am good. We are we are uh, here at the Nerdist uh, the the Nerdist Loft, the theater, the the eerie. The, oh, uh, nice! Right? Isn't it like an eagle, like an eagle eye yeah. view of Nerd Melt? Of yeah, and that's not pronounced books? airy. It's pronounced eerie. No, I'm wrong. It's, I think it's pronounced <laughs> airy. I don't know. <laughs> it's, oh, you know what I do? I do a lot of reading. Don't I do a lot of talking. I can spell it. I can't say it. Exactly. I can spell a lot of things. It's, um, uh, so here we are. It's it's uh, this us. Is, uh, this is our first official show I this think. will be the first one we'll drop and then we had a bunch of ones that we did earlier that we'll add later you can if you if, are if you really love the show. into us you can go back and hear us fumbling around fumbling around learning about how how many articles are possible to send a person <laughs> hey we don't like women comics hey we don't like women in general hey you're short and you bother me yeah it's uh so those were like the first five episodes us just going through the backlog of yeah. people saying mean things so and this podcast is about um we're uh, we're comedians. We've been doing comedy almost like, seventy seven hundred years yeah, together. I've been doing it since eighty seven. You've been doing it since eighty five. Okay, yeah. so long time, long time and listener, full time. Yes, yeah, and yeah. we're we've just been around for a long time, and we have lots of thoughts on women and comedy, and that seems to be a never ending uh, d- topic or fascination. It is a rabbit with hole. the media right now. You know, somebody asked me. They said, "What's it about?" And I said, "Well, you know, as opposed to middle aged white guys talking about comedy, <laughs> it's middle aged white ladies talking about comedy. <laughs> and when when yeah. when we're all lucky, it's just going to." be different comics of different people of color, yeah. different genders, transgender. It feels like it's turning into that. I I, I feel like comedy is getting a lot more femi- female. I, I, I think there's a the, lot of great women. There's great women. I think the audience is getting more female. And yeah. I think the venues are almost like uh, alternative venues seem a little more feminine because they're it's it, there's a lot more women producers of stand up, yes. especially in Los Angeles. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and in Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. And how about San Fran? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you, you could, were just in New York. I was. Were there a lot of women run? Uh, what you mostly do? Did I was you, at the stand most of the time. right? Yeah. But wait, let me go back before okay. we get to New York. I, yeah. I do think that f- the stand up comedy is becoming more female in 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 every single way. And there's more female comics and and with the audience and just the, kind of almost the rhythm of stand up. It's not so. It's not a lot of. Uh, like if Andrew Dice Clay was the most masculine sort of energy, <laughs> there's a, a a lot more female type of energy on stage. Right. There's more. Do feminine you agree ener- with that? I. Sure, I think so. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you don't have to. No, I was I was trying to think. Like I think that there's there's. There's noticeably more women in mm-hmm. every part of the of, of the production. Yes. From coming to see it to performing it, especially because I think we've talked about this before, about how you hang out with a bunch of comics or a bunch of bookers and you are the only woman in the room. That still happens frequently. Right. It still happens frequently. But now more often there's another woman, another woman yeah. in the room. So when someone says something horrifying, you can say... Did he just say something horrifying? <laughs> and you have someone to turn to, and you can both nod and go, "Oh yeah, that that is inappropriate." Are yeah. we still going to go out to breakfast? This ju- that <laughs> just reminded me. L- last weekend, I was working at uh, Stand Up Scottsdale. Oh and right, Emily Galati, who's so funny, yes. and by the way, has this will be she has a, a an abortion joke that is so fucking brilliant, and, and it's, it's going to destroy. It will. It's she's, right now. It's she great. acknowledges that it's just three weeks old. It's one of those jokes that is you have to you're going to have to learn to control it and, and yeah. manipulate it. It's like an amazing. It's a wildfire. You told me ball, the bit. It's, yes, but it's clay a clay yeah. that she is slowly shaping, and it's fucking phenomenal. <laughs> Um, so it's early on. I'm, yeah. I'm like in three months, it's going to be, yeah. it's going to change the world. Right. She's going to actually, <laughs> she's going to create uh, yeah. a whole, she's going to stop like the, the, the stopping of women reproductive rights. That, <laughs> that it's going to, she's going to stop the tide. Yeah. It's, it's going to be awesome. So we're in the green room and somebody, uh, I'm not going to say who it was because I actually can't remember his name, but we're talking about, um, Sicarios and Emily, Emily Blunt is the female lead in Sicarios. Okay. And he didn't like her because uh, he thought she changed her character changed too much from uh, earlier stuff she had done, 
And we were both with like, the actress. Yeah, like and isn't oh, he that what are liking the actress? actresses are supposed to be yeah, doing? Yeah, you're an empty vessel. Somebody pours a script into you, and then yeah. you turn into a bad guy or a good guy, right? And then 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 another movie came up, and he liked that actor because oh, is you know he's so different in this movie than the other one, and we're both like, what? What you just did? happened? Emily bro? Blunt just did the same thing, but you didn't like her, right? Yeah, yeah. So that yeah, that kind of stuff where if you're the only woman in the room. You're you're like, am I crazy? Is this a female thing? And should I bring it up or yeah. not? And then we both just sort well, of Andy, the same Andy was my fella, me. Andy Ashcraft, yeah. good, good egg. Uh, was just telling me because we've seen Star Wars twice mm-hmm. and we've seen uh, Mad Max Fury Road a uh, half a dozen times. And, really? But, yeah, we in own the it. theater. Oh, yeah, okay. in the theater we saw it four times, and then I, I've seen it twice since I bought it. So that's two. That's six. That's like a hundred and twenty dollars between yeah. the two of you just yeah, on they can Mad have, Max. Sure, sure, they can have all of my money. Oh sure. my goodness! Help yourself. Okay. And uh, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, but he was he had read some article about how the plethora of women characters in Star Wars and people of color like there were black I saw like an Indian or a Pakistani guy in yeah. the, with the bad guys in the background of, of The Force Awakens really and all I could think was oh my god there's a Oh, what? I think that guy's Indian, and, and he was just a background guy. He was just a, he was one of the he was one of the officers standing on the bridge of the of the terrible Death yeah. Star like thing, the Star Killer, and um, I was like, there's and then there's like just women running around, like women running to work ships, women, and were they know. in um were they in Bryce Howard heels from Jurassic World or <laughs> no. were they no, no they were all just dressed in like normal uniforms yeah and they look like either Nazis like bad guys always do in Star Wars yeah or they look like uh um you know like scruffy McScruffersons yeah because uh, they're the rebel they're, getting the job done yeah getting the job done rebels cool. and it was so neat and Andy said to me he said. You played when you were a kid. You played Star Wars, right? And I said, "Yeah." And he said, "Were you Luke Skywalker or Han Solo?" And I was like, "No, I was because I what I was uh, adjacent. I was just one of their friends who happened to be really good at you know flying the Millennium Falcon as well." <laughs> and uh, and he was like, "Yeah, it never." He said, "You know, it's not that I. It didn't occur to me that that there was sexism. It's just stuff like that. Like it like lights him up sometimes." He's yeah. Like, I guess I guess everything was pointed at me, and I get to be Han Solo when I'm playing, and I get to be Luke Skywalker if I want, and I can do whatever. You have to be Slave Leia. I have to either be Leia or I have to create a new character, which I am willing to do. I'm always <laughs> willing to write, Laurie Kilmartin. Well, you know, um, on uh, Project Green- Greenlight this last season, yeah. one, of, one of the one of the great. To me, the great scenes, but then to some other, some white guys I was talking to, they were like, oh, she's micromanaging. But it's a, an African American line producer. Okay. And um, there's like a hundred extras for a wedding. Yep. And it's a, it's an upscale wealthy wedding. Okay. So. Uh, of course, there are no upscale wealthy black people. <laughs> there, it's all white people in, wow. as extras. Yeah. And she refused. She's like, no, no, that can happen. And you and and the only I think the only black actor was a chauffeur. And she's like, I'm not going to be part of this where the only black guy is serving these white people. And yeah. there's no reason why you couldn't just have a table with three black faces or uh, Asian fa- a- any non-white faces <laughs> right. as just friends of these people. Yeah. Like who doesn't have friends least, that would come to your in Los Angeles? At the, like uh, this isn't an Omaha. This is Los Angeles now. Right, right. Everyone's got every kind of friend. It's it, everyone has their own. It's Noah's true because in 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 South Milwaukee, Wisconsin, there were there were very few black people. It's, yeah, uh, there were plenty of them who worked at the factory in South Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yeah, and then they uh, went home afterwards. They took yeah. the bus. They got in their car, and uh, so the first sort of rich black people I saw was two times uh, here in Los Angeles when I went to Quincy Jones's restaurant uh it was entirely full of wealthy or middle class black people and i was like this is weird being the (laughs) only white person and then i opened up for anita baker Whoa! Yeah, I did. You a, guys I did just stand-up. missed the move she just did to jog her memory. I, she you know did why? a dance because I was thinking of Anita Bryant. Yeah, and she doesn't <laughs> sing. She's political. Right, she's right. there's something with orange juice. Yeah, uh, she's a nightmare. Uh, Anita Baker, on the other hand, it was an entire audience of just affluent black yeah. people who had come out to the theater to see yeah. some music, and I was doing my fifteen minutes to warm them up, get yeah. them all pointed in the right direction. Yeah, and it was just. And you're like, yeah, there's plenty of affluent black people in the world. And it's not, it's, we have, there just isn't represented. Yeah. So it's it cool to see different people in the background of all this crap. Right. It's and just it's neat. It's so weird that it doesn't occur. It doesn't occur to, to pe- people's brains. Like, right. 
you don't go, this doesn't look weird to you. Like every, I think everyone should live in New York for five years. And <laughs> right? then, then an all white audience will be terrifying to you. Right. Because, It'll be spooky. Yeah, it is spooky. And I remember Salt Lake I, City. Yes. I used to, I was it's just soothing a for a day and a half. Mm -hmm. And then it's spooky. All right. So go ahead. <laughs> I was just a road comic for a long time. And when it was mostly road audiences were mostly white audience, mostly middle class white audience. Right. right because to, uh, me too. I wasn't working the going black to the room comedy, circuit. Yeah. Uh, the comedy catch or the comedy house theater or whatever it was. You know, right. it was all those little chains all over the South and the Midwest. And then I went to New York and there's never a racial majority. of. There's like right. a black table. There's a Dominican table. There's a Puerto Rican. And then, yeah. there's, then there's some white people. But they might be Europeans, like right. They so, might actually not be from America. Yeah, they might so be actually tourists. Yeah, there's no, there's no, no, no one owning owning the crowd. Yeah, you know, and so, um, so that actually it becomes normal after a while, and then you go back to an all white audience, and it's. It's weird. It's, right. It is weird. I remember the first time I did Salt Lake City, it was soothing. I was <laughs> I was like, why does this feel so calm? It's because I was like, I've not seen anyone. You know how it is soothing? It's like white noise, uh, to use the <laughs> their, pun, I guess. Laughter. There you go. Yeah. And, but it is, it's just like, you know, when there's nobody of any difference around you, you can feel sort of more comfortable. And then when you see people but it's always more it's more damn interesting when there's more different colors of course, yeah. and more genders and more everything yeah, yeah. And so um yeah so comedy is and it's becoming uh more common of you know just people yeah. of color you know I, I hate people of color such hari kondabolo had a funny I don't know. He just mentioned that he yeah. was, I guess I'm a person of color. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, you're, it's just such I a don't know. I'd sort of lump you into term. a bunch of people, but I guess we're all white. Yeah. So we yeah. get to, we get to go there. I told Super. him, I, I wish that the Dean Banquet, who's the, or Backwood, who's the uh, African-American editor of the New York Times, should start calling white people, people without color. <laughs> but it's not happening so far, but no, I don't see what. No, it hasn't taken. So let's, uh, so this is, um, this is, so I'm in articles. the middle of yeah. a road work. Oh, right. Which I never you're on do. on hiatus. That's right. From Conan. That's right. I'm a writer for Conan. So we have hiatus weeks. And this, this last week, I went, to, uh, I went to New York. I took my kid to New York. I was doing spots at the stand. And I, want, I wanted to be like Christmas mom during yeah. the day. <laughs> so, and um, it was tough, you know. And it, I, I, it, I had to, you know, I got sitters and stuff. I met one oh, sitter in... Um, uh, you're like, Craigslist. oh, good. I don't care. Uh, no, <laughs> no, but it's weird. It's it's a lot. Of, oh, um, not Craigslist, but pretty close. Like a friend of a friend met us in Times Square, and I'm like, hi, here's my kid. I'm gonna go to the stand to do oh, a couple that's sets, hilarious. and they went to see a movie. Okay. Um, but but yeah, and I, <laughs> and I brought my kid to clubs a couple times, right? And um, you know, it's worrisome, and I and I don't want to be, you know, I, I think sometimes people bring their kids, and it's like. You, 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 every parent naturally expects everyone to be fascinated by their child. So I don't want to be that person. So I'm, you know, well, I'm, well, I, I'm like, I was hiding him in a corner and putting blankets on him, <laughs> tell him not to make eye contact with me. Sit by the coats. Sit yes. by the coats. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it was, it was, it, I, I felt like I, I was pulled in every fucking direction uh, and it wasn't relaxing. Uh, sure. New York is never relaxing anyway. And, like I was there for ten years, and when I when I was there and I was doing spots every night, I was the strongest I've ever been. Like I was a fucking monster. Okay. And I'm in LA now, and I'm like, I'm maintaining, I'd say eighty percent of my abilities with spots here. You, you know? do so many sets, Lori Gilmartin. It's hilarious to but, me that you think that you could do more sets. <laughs> no, but it, but but so okay. I, I was like, oh my god, I'm I'm getting ready to go to New York. What I have to follow? You know, if I have to follow Big J, I mean, you you have to assume you're going to follow yeah. somebody who does seven sets a night and right. is a f fucking killer, right? And um, you know, and, and I did a, a lot of times, and I'm yeah, because Big J Okerson works out at the stand of oh, yeah, and too, then right? he wasn't there that week, but Keith uh, Keith Robinson, like sure. I, watched, I love the, Keith Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, he was on Tough Crowd, and he was doing crowd work, and he was killing it. And it's just that easiness that, and I when I get to New York, I'm like, I got to prove I haven't lost it. Like I have <laughs> three days where I'm just like, oh fucking kill, kill it. And right. then, then like the, with you. the fourth or fifth day, I'm like, okay, I don't think it's anyone comedy. thinks I lost it. It right. doesn't matter. Maybe I did lose something, you know. But whatever, I'm here and I'm doing fine, and it's okay. And then I then I then I like I felt like the but last is it more night, fun. Yes, there you go. The last night I had I had sets where it was me. You know that okay. where you're instead of trying to prove yeah. you you haven't lost something, you're just like 
fine with yourself. Yeah. Uh, so so that always it always takes like four or five days to get to that. really get that back. Yes, and then of course I left the next. I day. want you to have that. <laughs> I, want I want you to have time. that from the get go. I know. Why would you ever be insecure, Lori Kilmartin? Because you fucking destroy every time you. go I on don't stage. destroy every time, and 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 I you know I mean, a lot not... of the sets here are like like I was telling you in the email. It's like at the hat store or it's at this, and those are yeah. cool sets. But sure, that hat does... store is nice. It's a hat store gig. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is actually. It's over in nice South gig. Pass. I yeah, think, I like Pasadena, it. Yeah. But th- those kind of shows are different from like a New York audience, sure. You know? And that and that club audience, it's almost like that double Dutch where you just gotta follow the rope and then jump right in. And it's a that it's, is a beautiful analogy. By the way. <laughs> it's it's faster, and yep. maybe there's two ropes in New York City, and in yep. LA there's one rope and it's really slow, and in New York it's two, and you gotta fucking move your fa- feet really fast, and you can get back in your rhythm, but it does take a little bit, and it's always terrifying. But what and I then love- I'm worried that the sitter's kidnapping my kid. Right, right. That'll at, throw at the you. same time. There's but a when the kids in the in brain. the club, do you ever think to yourself, is he, is someone turning him into an old soul? Please don't turn him into an old soul. <laughs> He's just a boy. Leave him alone. <laughs> he was I, both times I put him in corners and I let him play on my iPhone, so yep. I couldn't record those sets. But um, right, it was a had something. He needs I had his to... own iPhone. What? Yeah. No. no, too soon, too, too soon. soon. And I'd so, rather not. Yeah, yeah. What I love about LA sets versus road sets mm-hmm. versus New York sets mm-hmm. is that they're all so different. Right. Mm-hmm. I yes. mean, you get different skills. Yeah. Los right, Angeles right. audiences, because you're in a hat shop, because yeah. you're in a dive bar performing for the seven other. Co- Last night I did a set in the dark. <laughs> and the only thing lit was the stage. It was some weird La Crescenta Glendale bar mm-hmm. that the bar itself didn't, didn't have any light. Wow. I said to the bartender, what are you just finding booze by feel? <laughs> it's like this. This looks like a root beer. And because um, I'm a hundred. <laughs> yeah. That's your booze? That's your booze. We're old ladies, really, guys. Really nice, really nice uh, sprecker. Anyway, so. But I don't the, even know what that is. It's a kind of root beer that's out of Milwaukee. Okay. I'll be over here. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> but what, it's it's like they listen a lot more in Los Angeles. They mm-hmm. want to hear what weirdo yeah. uh, premises you're coming up with. That is true, too, in New York as well. They want to hear weirdo premises, but they would like you to chop, chop, get to the fucking point. I, I, I agree. And I do think um, the L.A. audiences are willing to meet you halfway a little bit more. And the New York audiences won't lift a fucking finger. Right. Like, they'll you just stare at you for a give second. Give them a joke. Like- they get immediately... Or they'll turn on you. Right. Unless you're famous. In both cases, yeah, the they fam- will cut you all the slack in the all world. All of our rules don't apply to famous yeah, people. Yeah, none of them apply if, if Jesselnick shows up. Everybody's <laughs> yeah, like, it'll everyone. be fine. <laughs> Amy Schumer, oh, we're just going to love right. her and it'll be fine. Yeah. And so, but, and then road stuff. Yeah. And remember, like, because I, I tend to work on a lot of new stuff on the mm-hmm. road mm-hmm. and I forget. Like, it's it's like what you said, you know, like I went on the road and I was like, oh, I like to open the first 15 minutes of my new 15 minutes. So I was like, what are you, nuts? Why are you opening with your, oh, yeah. friend with your new 15 minutes? But I didn't want the club to see the old 15 minutes. Oh, I do the same thing. Where, oh, yeah. Oh, the club, the club, well, I want the club to think that I'm You want always, to impress. Uh, right. I want them to know that I am continuing to write. So right, I have right. my own insecurity issues exactly. about whether or not I'm going to do well. And plus, here's, the, here's, a, here's an admission that I was talking to Bamford about. You know, like, you know when you get in the groove and you're killing every night? Mm-hmm. And then you get up and you just do really well. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and it's you're an like, outrage. Oh, it is. It's an outrage. I won't pay. I won't pay. Why was I not carried off stage? What happened? And uh, and so it is a bit of a tiny letdown. Yeah. If you're in the zone yeah. and then all of a sudden you just do well. Yeah. And you're like, everybody had a good time. Stop doing it. And you, what my favorite thing is you tweeted the other day is you said that some somebody came up to you after the show. Mm-hmm. And said that you you were pretty funny. And by the way, yes. Who was this? Some Just dude. Some la- a dude. Some dude. All right. And it could. It was Emily and I are walking out. We're at Scottsdale, and it okay. was the Late Show, which was always a mess. A mess. It was. <laughs> it's always a sloppy, somebody, sloppy mess. Somebody went up and did some very experimental experimental character work, which angered the audience. <laughs> Understandably, a, if you they... pay for a Saturday night show. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. So <laughs> nobody wants to suffer through your hat. Yeah. And then yeah. I had to like 
you know, get in there. It's a, yes, regroup, calm them down. And then (laughs) to, you know, and then that's what, those are the shows where you end up doing more time because you want to really make up for everything that happened. Yeah. (laughs) You're like, you people deserve comedy. Let me fix this. So I worked harder on that show than any of the other shows. Right. And, and made it fine and made it, it nice for it people. was good people left That's going that was beautiful. a good show and mm-hmm. hopefully they mm-hmm. forgot about the <laughs> 10 minutes they were furious um and that's when i got the pretty funny and i'm like motherfucker nope. don't nope. modify that ad- that you know compliment yeah. you tell me i'm funny or you just shut the fuck up and walk to your car Here, so that's all you can give me yeah Ugh. first show saturday madison mm-hmm. wisconsin mm-hmm. last week and great club super fun a uh, couple comes, two ladies come out. I don't know if they're a couple, but a couple of ladies come out and they're, I'm selling merch because I am the Larry the Cable guy of stand-up comedy. You, I have a lot of merch. I have all respect for you. I can't, I, what you do want you no part of it. Oh I, my God. I well, have if, three, I was, if I, if I, I was a DVD, making, a CD, yeah. two other CDs, which I didn't bring. And then I have four t-shirts. How much does it cost you to bring that stuff? Do you Nothing. Just, it's a, I, I get free luggage because of because uh, I'm on the ro- road forty weeks a year, oh. and so I have uh, Delta. That, oh, that's great! The Delta and Southwest. Uh, if you get the, the Delta, if you get yeah. the Delta card, you get two free bags. Oh, and po- extra points, and then uh, Southwest always free. And those are the two. Right. Those are the two airlines that I mostly fly. Okay, and I don't always bring all of the shirts because I feel it, ridiculous. You bring a lot of sizes too, right? Right. I used to sell shirts, and um, well. Yeah, I just there's shirts and there's shirts, right? I mean, no, there's tell me there's horrible shirts, right? right? There's the shirt with a frog on it that says "Rub it." Is that yours? No, that's okay. Adam Richmond's. Okay. That's that fuck job. Okay, and then um and then there's I, all of mine are like fan art. So F- I fuck chop, by the way, is a great one. It's a good one. It is a good one. It's nice, and uh, it's just uh, usually uh, powered by a pile of fucking haircuts. <laughs> anyway, so um. But my shirts are usually, they're fan art, mm-hmm. and they're usually, I, I only want to sell shirts that I want to wear. Mm-hmm. And then I was told by my nephew, you cannot wear your own shirts because it isn't cool. And he's 23, so he knows shit. And I was like, mm, boo. So okay. I have two yeah. Dork Forest t-shirts, and then I have a Ranger of the Dork Forest t-shirt, and then I have my new, because I have a joke about Spooky Reading Girl, mm-hmm. I have a Spooky Reading Girl t-shirt. And they're all union made here in the United States by people with dental I don't know. Here she goes, guys. Here we go, it's Billy Bragg with the, uh, the, with yeah, the politics. Exactly. Anyway, so so but so I I had all the merch, but anyway, these two women come up. One of them had the time of her life, mm-hmm. <laughs> and she was telling me that she had a lovely time, and she I thought she thought I was very funny, and hooray for comedy. And the other one <laughs> just stood there for a second, and there was a pause, and the, that woman leaned in and she goes, "I like three quarters of your act." Oh my god! And I said, "Oh great." That's great. Thank you so much. And then she said, the other quarter. And I said, no. Da, stop no, her. Right that's there. it. Stop. You don't get to tell me. And, yeah. uh, and she said, well, I was just going to. And I said, no, no, I'm just going to appreciate that you like 75% of it. That seems great. There are a lot of people, you know, some people don't like I, even that I, much. It's, that's my buggling to me that people feel like they can come <laughs> up and tell you that. You know? It was a lot of information that I didn't need. I'm so good. many people and their opi- have been empowered to give their opinions. Right. Social had media. A couple I blame adult, Twitter for this. I blame a couple of adult beverages <laughs> and, uh, and the fact that comics are approachable. Yes, you're and, very approachable. You are. Well, I am super approachable. Who doesn't want to take this home and cuddle? <laughs> and, uh, um, completely insane. But yeah, and it's, but the road is, is, yeah, so that's... And it also is a great place to get your practice your persona on stage you know <laughs> you know what i mean just to have your personality on stage oh absent your material separate from your material is who you are on stage who you, right how you take the stage how you interact with people mm-hmm. you know what i mean like that's a separate thing from your jokes i think and i think and doing long not... amounts of time yeah really help you kind of develop that to find that Yes. Yeah. To get get better at that. Yeah. There was there was a lot of um. Wh- who was we want to do a segment? Remember the segment yes. we want to do with the with the woman comic that of the we, week or whatever. Fa- yeah. Or just any comic, I suppose. Eventually. Yeah. Right. Because right. we're gonna run out of women. You know, we're no. <laughs> we're never gonna. <laughs> we're run. We paying it forward. Yeah. Or Is something, that like, something that. like that. Something like that. We could name it. We yeah. Could, or but let's not name it paying it forward. Yeah. Well, let's okay. name it bucket list. Why? No, I don't know. Oh. Because <laughs> uh, let's stick a bunch of women in a bucket and go, this is the last thing I'm going to watch. This is, It's comics <laughs> we're, like we see in clubs. That, that you don't know. That you probably don't know because they're not getting on late night yet. Right. And um, they should be. But they're super funny. Do you want to do it now? 
I don't. Well, remember the one you emailed oh, yeah. me? Who was well, that? It was, okay. Because she was super smart and silly and right. funny, which is my favorite kind of well, comedy. Well, I was going to, you know what? I, I will do Emily Galati another time. Okay. Because I just. Because you just of, worked with her and it yeah. was great. But I'll do her. We'll do her another time. We can get more in depth on her. And, yeah. Um, but Marcella Arguello is. Uh, uh, she's a friend of mine. She's. Uh, Originally from Modesto, she's a San Francisco comic initially. Okay. And I don't know if it's like this where you start in Minneapolis, but San Francisco comics, no matter when you started, you have this sort of connection, you know, with every generation. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the generations are like five, six years apart. Yeah, yeah. They're tight. Yeah, so Marcella's, uh, you know, she's younger than me. She might be in Kamau Bell's sort of generation. Okay. Maybe a little bit younger. Okay. And really funny. Um She's she's very hip. She's like very she does a lot of funny hip hop jokes that I shouldn't get because right. I'm not into hip hop. <laughs> right. I mean, I love the Sugar Hill Gang. Don't get me wrong. But right. well, uh, hip hop is over ever since yeah. Hamilton hit the bigs. Oh, really? Well, it's oh, a sign when it no more Hamilton a- from you. I can't take it. I love Hamilton. <laughs> No, but you have not thrown away. I'm not thrown away my shot. <laughs> and you know, I got for Christmas. I got a T-shirt what? that says "Burr shot first. and uh, it's uh, it's in the Han Solo font. It's yeah. in the in the in the Han shot. Oh first, yeah, yeah. But it says "Burr shot first. Aaron Burr. It's about Aaron Burr and Hamilton in the duel. That the, anyway, I'll be I over just here. checked out. <laughs> TikTok. That's out. it. That's it. I'm back. You're going to talk about that murder thing on Netflix. So whatever. Oh my. Okay. First, let me just finish with yeah, Marcella. Fin- Marcella. She, I think she did Last Call with Carson Daly, which okay. is fine. Yeah, but she should credit. definitely. She has a set. I know she yeah. has a set. She's ready to do a late night show, and um, she's her she her Instagram's really great. And I think we were talking about on an earlier. How do you spell her last name, Marcella? A R G U E L L O Arguello. Okay. Yeah. Google that, guys. Yeah. Marcella, she has a great Instagram where she, um, she she's really funny and she's she's like this real she's like six three and probably weighs twenty five pounds so she's got this right, very she's interesting super willowy and tall rock star and, yeah. body yeah like I I think she has that it quality where she's fascinating she's mm-hmm. also a good writer she's got all the good stuff and she's got that sort of thing where you're like you just want to you know watch her yeah you know, which is a it's a, it's an intangible I th- right, and i say I get never, on the marcella train i've met now. her but i had never really seen enough of her stand-up so when you sent me the link i went yeah. and i looked her up on google and video yeah. videos and watched her it was smart it was silly yes, yes. and it was yeah yeah it was yeah. all it was it was super she's yeah and, and she's a great a, comic she's a huge patrice, good writing. patrice o'neill fan which okay. is like another like check into her in her in, in her, her favor box. yes yeah she just like she has the right she has the right influences, you know, okay. and she's like headed in the right direction. She's she's going towards the light. All right. That's what I think. The Lori Kilmartin Stamp seal of, appro- o of approval. <laughs> yes, that's arr, right. Arr, arr, arr. Hey, <laughs> let's never do that again. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> I don't what? know why I impress. I made an why impression of seal. I don't know. Guys, see, I'm, it's, I don't do that many impressions, you guys. So I just thought I would um, do my do seal Do one less. <laughs> Let's wrap it up. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. And so so uh, then I was in Scottsdale last weekend, which was, like I said, it was pretty fun. Yeah. But, it, but that's like New York to Scottsdale. That's it. That's it. Those are two things. I'm it, Right. It was a good week. And then this next week I'm at Cobbs in San Francisco, which is like going home. That's home club. Yeah. Little. Because it, it's giant now, though. It's a giant room. It's That's like not the room you people. started out in. No, no, right? no. The yeah. other cops on the wharf was like this little. It was sweet it was a gem. Yeah, yeah. So I opened for Pat Oswalt there. Oh, the only really? time I ever got to uh, to work. That must it. have been was, a great week. It was a great week. It was he's a, a yeah. He brings like good. And people. it was twelve years ago. Wow. So he talk about being in your your stand up yeah. groove. Yeah. It was it was a sweet spot of of yeah yeah of working. Um. So I'm with, there with like Chad Daniels and Jacob Siroff oh my and God. Tony Kameen. Yeah. So it, it, we're, it's all uh, comics who can't New fill Eve? a 500 seater, but oh, perhaps the six of us can. Right. Each of you get a hundred to come out per show. <laughs> yeah. You guys can do it. Um, but, I'm not working until after New Year's. Do you usually work New Year's? I tr- I try to as much as I can. I always feel like that. That's even though it's misery. I'm like, oh, that means I'm a comic again this year. I used to think that, and then they because the other thing that used to happen with it is that the money was triple, right? And yeah. it's over. That's yeah. over. They're no longer doing that anymore. Yeah, I guess which not. is a disappointment uh, financially. Yeah, and then the audience yeah. is still charged triple. Yeah, though. the audience is still paying through the nose, yeah. but uh, the comics are no longer play- paid uh, enormous amounts. Yeah. I've worked t- two New Years in the last five years, and. It's been nice to not work the New Year's. Yeah. Because then I don't have to drive among the crazies. Yeah. And 
it's always a wrestling match to get them to pay attention to you. Yeah. And for New Year's shows. But I am I'm working the week after in my home club in Acme. So oh, talk about great. going home. It's that's I'm great. going to Minneapolis the first week of Jan. And it's gonna be so f- I don't know. Such I, don't a great even, room. I don't even know who's featuring and emceeing, but usually they're people who I mean he they're just amazing. Yeah. So I'm I'm super looking forward to that. I'm I'm also I'm staying with my mother at my parents' house. Hold Are on. you? I dropped dropped my pen. Um uh but uh I'm helping her move out, um, you know. Oh, and, right. And Is she going to go into some in sort of me. assisted? Oh, no. You? I'm assisting her. Are yes. you? <laughs> you're going to be the but, assist. You're yeah. this. All right. Um, so so it's weird. Like, like, it's a grim, it's sort of a grim It's a task to go in there and just, you know, because my dad died in that house. And, right. You know, party wants to preserve it or you right. know, put a plaque up for the next family. Shellac to, it. You're just go. like, I don't think you know my don't, dad lived here. He was don't great. Don't put a coffee table right here. Right. Just move, over here is fine. But right here is where his spirit left his body. Have you heard Bill body. Dwyer's joke about the couch? No, what? I think it's, uh, it was something about the couch that somebody died on. Yeah. And then they didn't get rid of the couch. Oh, his dad died on the couch and then yeah. they didn't get rid of the couch and he was like why didn't we get rid of the couch i just saw bill dwyer again you can't by the way. get rid of the couch you would get rid of it if somebody died on the even if it was my dad yeah yeah i'd definitely get rid of it i mean we're not a sentimental people and clearly uh but that might be a midwestern thing bill's from chicago i'm oh, from yeah. milwaukee you guys are hard we're, oh, but i've been watching a, making a murderer you motherfuckers are hard i knew it would come up you guys i loved your tweet about how the the wisconsin uh, accent is no longer as sexy as you oh my god it. awful uh, and then yeah it, it, it's just appalling on well just in poverty and you know Poor sure. people are not getting lawyers. Scott Walker. And, yeah. Sure. Yeah. The it's, whole. Yeah. There's there's awful. a reason why. It turns out there's some political reasons why people don't get lawyers. Yeah. It's because we're they're run by Matt. My my beloved state. I genuine. I love Wisconsin like the power of the Shire. It's like the Shire to me, which is a Lord of the Rings reference. You don't oh, need just, any part of it. You saw you saw my face go blank. Yeah, I saw your face kind of go. <laughs> and I was like, Dork Forest moment. Let me just tell you about uh, the, the Hobbit. Real and, Lorian. Uh, <laughs> Real or back in. Right. But you love murders and well, like, well i wouldn't put it that way ever <laughs> but uh, uh, do you watch any other like do you know well, michelle mcnamara pardon me do you know michelle mcnamara pat oswalt's wife true crime yeah. diary yeah dot oh yeah yeah, yeah whatever right she loves yeah she, uh, she, i her. could say to her i you love murders and she'd be like well i wouldn't put it like that either but she <laughs> loves the 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 mystery of yeah. the murder I don't care so much. I, it makes the, me uncomfortable. The thing about making a murderer is that I think we're used to the dynamic of white uh, white police officers, white power structure, and a minority that's being shafted. Right. And it's still so – it's surprising to see. It's like it also happens white on white. And so right. it's less – I mean, there's racism involved when it's white on black, but there it's a fuck of a lot of classism involved when it's white on white, when it's white on white. And so it, it's also got to be that with white on black, too. Right. You know, right. And it's well, there was a there was a, a black kid was shot in Kenosha, Wisconsin, right. and the dad came out and was was protesting it. And this white he. This the guy wrote it. It was an article I read, very powerful article. A couple. Of, I can't. I wish I had all of the information. Let me start yeah. here with a third of the information, you guys. Tell me what you've retained. Here's what I've retained, which is the black guy went up to the white guy and he said, "You know, they killed my son last year, and there's some relief in the fact that they also killed yours." And uh, the fact that neither of our a, families will get any justice. It's a white man ha- also had a, his son. His white year old son. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And I remember that. So it was just essentially Kenosha, Wisconsin cops just shooting a lot of young men. Right. Of various races and colors and creeds. And well, as a cops, mother of a brown son, I'm not even not remotely great. worried about it. Oh, yeah, my. I'm fine. sure. <laughs> How about we take away all the guns from the cops and just give them tasers? And uh, then it, only people who die are people with bad hearts. Yeah. How about that? Then it's a crapshoot. <laughs> then it's just a you're, crapshoot. You're going to die anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, Any hoodle. But, but here's like when um, last weekend in Scottsdale, I, uh, Emily was doing joke writing with a couple of comics that were working at the improv. Oh, uh, cool. Joke machine. Mike Lester and Derek Hughes. Okay. Minnesota guys. That's yeah, yeah. I know those you. guys. Okay. Yeah. So we all meet at a Starbucks and then I, re- I like, we're all you know, throwing our premises out. And I, f- I just, my premises were, I felt like such a grown, like my life's oh, too yeah. grown up. <laughs> 
Like oh, my compared thing to their is, premises? my mother's moving in with me and I'm trapped like a fucking rat, you know, and, <laughs> and it, it was a lot heavier than, you know, some the, the 20 lighter something. sort of, yeah. yeah. And Which, or 30 something, but cause yeah. Derek Hughes has a couple of kids, doesn't he? I don't know. I didn't. Yeah. Oh, not according magician. to his act, but, oh. <laughs> uh, or not according to the shit he's working on. But, but, but it, I, I just felt like, like envious of when I was like in my twenties writing about dating. <laughs> Right, you know, you know I, I, was, I ended up watching. It was a, so easy, you know, and now it's like this. It's real shit, and oh, I ugh. think that that's going to be great, though. The thing is, is I love that shit. I love those. I love that kind of stand up. I, I love hearing from... stand up, but living it to write oh, it. Oh, right. Well, not there, that it. is <laughs> not worth. Not it. Not worth it. <laughs> Grief, people dying. Like yeah. I'm. Like I, I'm just. I'm like, how do I'm with? I'm was this comic, and I'm taking care of two. I'm a 78 year old and a, a nine year old, and I'm I'm right tending to them. Right. How did this right. fucking happen? Well, it does seem to be the nature of the biz of, mm-hmm. of the business of life. Yes. This, you know, I've been working for the last, I would say, three years on this bit about grief. Yeah. That will not. I mean, parts of it are funny, right? But what I need to do is I need to write it all out and find out where the three punchlines are, and then get rid of all the extraneous bullshit, right? But I want to talk about the extraneous bullshit because I think that there's something, there's probably something there, yeah. In the fact that no one in my family, in my community, in Wisconsin, in my, I don't know, it feels like nobody is dealing with grief. In and it might be a 21st century American thing where literally someone dies and someone around you treats you like. Yeah, people die. Walk it off. You know, it's right. like, go, let's go get a cup of coffee. And you're like, well, I would like a cup of coffee, but can't I be sad for a second? Right. It's weird because there used to be like lamentations and people a would year. wear black for a year. And it was like, it you know, took widows. a year. Yeah, right. it, it, it was like an acknowledgement for... that you're in a special place. Right. It took a year to get over my mother's death. How and, old were you? Uh, well, my stepmother died three yeah. years ago. Right. And right. Uh, so and it took a year for me to go. And not just be randomly, weirdly sad. Right. You know, like your father just yeah. passed away. And it there's random, weird sadness yes. that happens. Yeah. Because you're reminded. Like, I would think I would get really mad at my aunt and uncle, uh, her, her siblings. And mm-hmm. I'd want to call. She's the only one that I could call yeah. to bitch about them. Right. Because she's the only one who would get it. Yeah. Everybody else would be like, why do you even talk to them? And I'm like... Well, because they're related. I don't. Yeah. Because I miss her. Yeah. And uh, you're like, well, I'm going to talk to them. And they're like, well, I wouldn't talk to them on a dare. And you're like, ah, talking to you is not effective. And uh, <laughs> I, so then I have to talk to heaven and talk to my mom and my stepmom in heaven. Do you do that? I do a little bit. I, I will occasionally go, Nancy, Jesus, what's going on? Wow. And, uh, that's cool. So it's, I mean, I feel it, it gives some solace. But here's the yeah. but, but here's the only the the biggest byproduct of Andy's dad died and then two months later my stepmom died, and um, the biggest byproduct of that is I don't keep my phone on at night anymore. <laughs> Do you know why? Because people will still be dead in the morning. Uh, Everybody yeah. died at two in the goddamn morning. Yeah, and why you want your have... you want your last eight hours of peaceful yeah. sleep? Yeah, I'm gonna sleep it out. It turns out like nine eleven. Yeah. Uh, guess what time I woke up on nine eleven? Eleven a.m. Uh Pacific time. <laughs> so I, w- I had already up, gone down. I was on. I was living on the Upper West Side, and I woke up Oof. also around ten thirty. Um, I just, you know, right. I, I'd well, had a late night. You had a late reason night. for me to be up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, but I was watching a bunch of comedy uh, before I got here because of Beth Stelling and all that, right? right. And so I. W- so let's, ended up- let's talk about what Beth Stelling before you. Before I talk about just ge- comedy in general, I was just going to say comedy okay. in general because you were just talking about what younger comics write about. Oh, and I remember this in mm-hmm. my 20s. I would write, I would write mostly about drinking, mm-hmm. and most of the guy comics would write about getting high. And I've yeah. noticed that that tends that sort of remained the same. Most of the young yeah, women totally. comics I, I know write more about drinking, yeah. and most of the young men comics that I see write more about getting high, and um. I was so psyched to stop writing those jokes. Yeah. Because, I mean, there's there's good dick jokes there. I mean, there's perfectly good sex jokes to be... There's good all, dick jokes everywhere. It's true. You if can write them. If you're a if professional, got, you can find genitals. So, right. No matter and where you are. Even in grief, you guys. Oh, anyway, especially... So, yes. So, yeah. So, Beth Stelling posted today on Instagram. This is... Uh, what day is it? The 28th. 28th. Or, so, this 28th. is going to go up a week from now. And then there was already an article on Vulture about it, about how she was in an abusive relationship. Um, this year, this year, like while we've known her, yeah, yeah, yeah. while we've known her, 
uh, whoever her boyfriend is or was, yeah. and luckily she broke up with him. And and she said she didn't want to out him because she didn't want to hurt his feelings. And then she was like, "Well, that's absurd because he beat the shit out of me." Right. And she didn't put it like that. I'm going to extrapolate. So, but it was it was she showed these pictures yeah. of her on television, and then the pictures of her legs where he clearly their finger bruises on her yeah, legs where he's clearly pretty, pretty gross. just throwing her around yeah. or holding her down or right. doing some horrible horrible thing, and it was gutsy stuff. And there's already an article about how because she was like, I don't want to, I don't, I want to still be funny, and I if I'm ever going to talk about this stuff, you guys have to know that what I'm saying is not. Not true is yeah. what it felt like. I mean, it's the sort of thing that I think we've always gone through mm-hmm. as women comics where you're like, well, I can't really talk about that because no one's going to believe me. And so she posted pictures, <laughs> which I think is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I also think like it's, you know, you think the audiences don't want to hear it, you know? Yeah. And that's what I do. That's another thing I think about it, the feminizing of comedy a little bit is I think a lot of, a lot of people do want to hear it now. And it's not... Yeah, it's not the same. There's a dozen guys who don't. It's not the uh, same dumb audience that came out in the '90s, in a way. You know, Mm -hmm. it's there. It's you know all the. It's almost like all the observational comedy. Like it's everything's been observed. (laughs) There's not a lot of new shit that hasn't gone unnoticed. (laughs) We've noticed as much as we can about riding the bus, you guys. It's crazy. It's 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 all. It's it's all been noticed. So (laughs) so it's all you have to you have to shift the gaze internally. Um, yeah, you know who else has a great chunk about rape is uh, this comic named Wendy Starling. Do you know yeah. her? No, I don't know. She her. has a really. I, mean, I think I've met her, but uh, she's, her name she has something familiar. she was working on here that was like uh, that was also really really great, and I just felt like, oh man, that's going to be amazing when you finish it. You know, right. it's and um, you have something. Right, that's, I've got that that crazy sexual healing. It's a joke. that is a great bit, and it's but it's Thank not you. it's not graphic, but in a because of how delicate you describe it, it 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 almost is graphic in a way because it's gentle and it's not like a this happened word word. It's not Charles right. Bukowski. It's it's right. a little. It's more feminine. Yes, it is a softer way of looking at being attacked. Yeah, and. Than trying to get over it. Right, I mean, right. The thing is, is that bit. I remember the first time I tried, the first couple of times I tried that bit. It's, it's. You have to. Uh, <laughs> nobody really. I mean, I was trying to explain it without having. Nobody has to relive it with me. I, you're the uh, first person I'd ever heard talk about stuff like that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, a ground floor of uh, of changing yeah, the world, yeah, you yeah. guys. And but it's. I mean, I think it's. I think it, it, it's like what you were talking about with grief and with your mom moving in and being trapped in a corner, mm-hmm. <laughs> just going, why am I, why do I have to help all of the generations? And, <laughs> right, uh, right, right, right. Right. I think that everybody wants to know how to make that funny. Mm-hmm. And so with Beth, I, and Beth is a great comic. Mm-hmm. And so the writing will happen. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is the fact that she did it so publicly is so crazy to me yeah. because that's essentially a first draft of the joke, her posting those pictures. Right, right. It's super dark, but she's like, no, this is going to be funny, you guys. I swear to God, one day, but oh, I'm not really? going to protect this asshat anymore. And that was great. Yeah, that's amazing. And it's also it's also so astonishing where like when when you think of something like that happening to female comedy you're like oh that must have been what got you into comedy happened a long time ago and to think oh, and then you're frizzing above you're in it, it some she's in it like six months ago right after, six years you know, into doing stand-up comedy. comedy yeah she's yeah. it's like that's still no matter that yeah <laughs> like i was i knew her when it, it's so strange <laughs> right. to me right like you, you know and it's and that's that's also something i i guess it's it's a myth is that um, it wouldn't happen to somebody who otherwise has a whole bunch of other shit going on, you right. know, even a, and, and of all the people, the comics are the most outspoken about stuff. Yeah. You know, and, because, and even somebody like that. You yeah. Know? It's it's um, I, I it's very powerful, super powerful now. And it leads me to my next thing I wanted to talk about, which is the comments section 
on anything. Right. Uh, you know, like I did Conan for the mm. first time like three years ago. It was my first late night set ever. And it was amazing. And uh, uh, Yeah, you had a great set. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And then I got to do it again this la- this year. Yep. Very exciting. And I've submitted another Everyone one. Everyone loves he, you. He hasn't called me back. Anyway, so, <laughs> I think uh, that's his way. It's my I hear way. that. I hear that a lot. Yeah, I, have, sure. I have nothing. I, there's no control <laughs> there's I have ab- over it. There's nothing you can do about but it. I, I, I can that. ping him again as the new year begins. Yes. And, just and go, it's not Conan we're talking about. We're oh, talking not at all. We're talking about the comedy guy who books it, who is, by the way, the only guy in in the business that I've ever seen do his job. Yeah, and he's great and he books a ton of women. Especially yeah, you know, and a you compare ton it to of the comics. Yeah, if you compare it to the other shows, it's like so all, many no offense, but we're off the charts. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. No offense, but uh, Conan's really knocking it out of the park. Yeah. Yeah. So uh the show. And so uh but I accidentally read the comments. Of your of of my special of, okay. of my uh of my set. And I was reminded to never read the comments. Right. Because you're looking for some sort of positive feedback. Yeah. And there's some of that. There's some of that. And then all of a sudden you get punched in the face and you're like, oh, that's right. Uh, There's a bad guy. Uh, Yeah. Your positive feedback is Conan O'Brien putting his arm around you going great set. Yeah. That's 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 pretty. That's all you need, Jackie. Yeah. And the check. Yeah. Yeah. Both of those things. The fact that I got to be on the program. Yeah. Conan enjoyed the set. Yeah. And I get paid. And said have her back. Yeah. Yeah. Have her back. Those are all three. That's That's that's, enough. That's enough with the comments. You don't need boner6969 <laughs> at Gmail. You don't need to. I love that guy, man. Did you know that he has a boner? <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I did this thing also for the money where it was a storytelling thing for always makes um, – like depends depends as a brand yeah uh but always makes a depends like underpant um for if you accidentally pee yourself like, oh, okay. like if you have problems stopping your pee yeah and so there's a website called purpleclover.com which is for uh women of a certain age and that age is 50 and above and so i fucking hate all this shit that's 50 and above and i'm like Wait, that's me too. <laughs> Get off! Like half post fifty and over makes me want to cringe. Yeah, it's all cringeworthy. Yeah, but Purple Clover, uh, you know, what they—they're trying to be more. Fifty isn't that bad. Don't worry about it. Yeah, and uh, so they asked a bunch of women comics in their forties and fifties and sixties, and everybody, I think, over forty, uh, to come and do stories. And so they asked me if I would do a story, and I oh. said, "Does it pay?" And they said, yes. And then I said, okay. And then I submitted some story ideas and they picked one of the stories, which was just a bunch of, you know, I do a storytelling stand-up, So it's just a bunch of material yeah. that I, that I told as a story. And then I show up and I sit down to do it. And the producer guy's like, Hey, do you have any other stories about wetting yourself? And I said, I don't, I don't have a lot of stories about throwing up on myself. Is that something? Uh, and uh, he goes, no, we're hoping that you might have had. And he said, it's fine. It's going to be. It's going to be fine. And I was like, okay, whatever. So I, I did my story. And it was perfectly, you know, it's just a, a sitting down set. Yeah. Me sitting in a nice blouse uh, telling <laughs> telling the story. Yeah. And so at the end of it, um, they air it. They air it on purpleclover.com. It has a spot on AOL. Mm-hmm. Because it's for old people. And so AOL, I was on the cover of AOL.com telling this story. Wow. Right. How do you, are you okay with that? Uh, well, that's what somebody asked. I mean, and nobody cl- saw it. Well, clearly. Nobody's cl- on AOL.com. And my name is nowhere, by the way. Oh, that's weird. On this video. It was super weird. It was almost like, well, it's an underpant ad. She's not going to want her name attached to it. And I was like, no, I did a one-nighter one time where there was a train that went around the bar. Uh, that was for $200. Uh, I, I don't have any pride <laughs> I have any left. Dignity. I don't have any dignity. What are you thinking? And so, but they didn't put my name on it. And so I started reading the comments. And a lot of people were like, that was really funny. Who the hell is she? Oh, and that come was on. Lovely, seriously? Right? Wow. Yeah. And that was nice. And then somebody posted that I was me. Yeah. My name. And then I read too long. And then all of a sudden it was, oh, shit, nobody likes my shirt. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> and then it just got worse from there. And I was like, oh, yeah, undo, undo. Just yeah. cash the check, call it a day. When I, uh, Do you read? Uh, I don't – no, not that much. But, I mean, I'm not – I don't have a lot of I, – I sometimes read um, – I, I have – I posted a thing a long time ago f- where I was uh, on stage at uh, River Center in San Antonio mm-hmm. and somebody threw bread at me. And I was recording it, so I recorded, you know, and I sort of dealt with it right, comedic, right. comedically like as one will. Yeah, exactly. Okay, fantastic. Um, so, so, so that went no up. one was policing that giant cavern of a room. Anyway, so that went up, and then, and then P 
people uh, telling me how they would have done it had <laughs> they had bread thrown at them on stage. What oh, is wow. my favorite? Monday Yo, morning. man, I would have boo 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 boo. Oh, oh, really? You who've never done stand up in your life, you would have boo 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 boo. Yeah. Okay. Monday morning quarterback. Yeah. Huh? Who doesn't want to? Who doesn't yeah. want to run the run the show from from their couch? <laughs> and uh, you're like, dude. I you know I this happened a couple of times last year, which was. Um, it happened once. Mm-hmm. Whatever. I'm trying to hide the uh, – protect the innocent. Uh, so I worked with a guy and the – not the owner of the club, but just like one of the manager guys, one of the – just the mar- bar manager was like, I don't like him. What uh, – we're thinking of cutting his time. Mm. And I was like, oh, I think he's great. I mean like what do you expect out of a feature? What um, do you want? Don't say the word cunt. Oh, Really? Not in front of me, no. Uh, not 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 before you. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. in conversation, it's fine. Yeah, if, if of it's course. in context, it's my okay. it's my uh, it's my middle name, so it's fine. <laughs> but no, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. an Irish. It's an old Irish word. <laughs> I, I um I don't know. You know, that's not even a hard rule because if it's a great joke, I don't care. I, right. I the most important thing is great jokes. Yeah. Um, but if you're, if you're going to break like 15, you know, if you're just going to do like easy shit and, and say, yeah, don't be a terrible comic is the, uh, I would love a great yeah, comic, but I, I don't like going up after if, if people aren't expecting that in the crowd, you know, and then they're sort of shell shocked when someone's really angry and you're a fucking cut. Now, you know, it's like, I have to go up after that. Right. Like, you know, you're supposed to, you're. I don't know. It's weird. Like when I was a feature, I was never trying to do anything for the headliner. I was trying to kill. I was okay. trying to blow the headliner off the stage. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, I have only heard that from men. This is an exciting in- oh, really? uh, little, little insight into the into the mind of yeah. uh, Lori Kilmartin. But see, I didn't do it in a way where I was unfollowable. Right. Like I, you know, I, I wasn't like. Um, sw- you weren't trying to bury the headliner. You were just trying to trying do the to best bury. I was trying to destroy so I could come back and headline the next time. Right. But You're just trying never, to do the best job yes, of you. Yes, It's never comfortable to when someone goes up on bombs after you. you no. Know, it's... And then the next the next night you're on the show. It's like not good. <laughs> it doesn't feel good. No. Um, uh, so... So, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I remember once being in, in like... In, uh, was it uh, in Ann Arbor? And the guy in front of me was just like unnecessarily lazily filthy. Okay, it was just you he know? was just shocked. And I felt like the audience, craziness. you know, was like, Ew. and uh, and I don't just know, just vaguely grossed out. Well, that's I mean, that's the worst case scenario. Yeah, you know, like lazy comics or or f- filthy comics for just no no punchline points. Yeah. But what I do want uh, my favorite thing to follow is someone who is destroyed. Mm-hmm. It's always I like to think of the idea of me going up and going, guys, it's not going to be a real, you know, I'm just going to try to keep it up here. Yeah, because the whole show has been great. Let's just keep it up here. And you guys will leave and go. This was the funnest night of my yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. And but but I I uh, I like it. I mean, if they're not super like if they're not super tight, like if the jokes aren't super amazing. Yeah. If they're thinking. Yeah. That's a win. Yeah. If. The comic before me, if she's done something where there, she does a lot of political stuff, and so they're thinking about that, even if the punchlines are hit and miss, that's fine. Emily or did a ton of political stuff, which and it was mi- great, and it was really funny and sharp, and I could tell it was Arizona, so some people were like, ah. I gotta go get my gun. It oh, was no, great. I don't. It's on me. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was great. I the, loved it, it. Right. It's just, it's, it's kind of, it's just a nice setup, and then you can knock it out of the and it's yeah. sweet and i because when i feature or when i open for anybody i want to set them up right like if i go up before someone who's super dirty i tend to do sort of my three dick jokes that i have yeah just so that they have heard the word fuck by the time they get up well i, I now if i'm opening for somebody now you know yeah. in that situation which i don't do but like if I if I were to do what you're doing, like opening right. for Regan or opening for Maria, yeah. I would definitely make sure I didn't do anything that would anyway harm or right. It's put, it's like sparring with Apollo Creed from Rocky. You know, He's yeah. Like, I'm not going to take a sucker punch. Yeah. I'm just going to. I'm you saying up. when I was a feature and I was yeah. only making 500 a week, and yeah. the only way you could get out was to get 
it was to- better comment cards yep. from the audience, you know, I would just try to fucking crush every single night. And, and that is different from what I was talking about. Yes, yes. Got, if, the- if you're a headliner or wherever you are and you're opening for Brian Regan, Brian Regan only has headliners. He has you, he has Kermit Pio, he has, he has yeah. like real headliners opening for them. Right. But, so yeah, but, you're but just But remember those do- guys that I was talking about who would try to blow the con- that, yeah. that wasn't That's something else where they were trying to actually set up the headliner to eat it. Yes, yes, yes. Which you were not doing. No, you no, were no, just no, trying no. to be the best you. Yes, yes. Which I always did anyway, just because I... I, you know, when you're only given 30 minutes and you have 45 minutes, yeah. you want to do all of your jokes anyway. I already oh, talk yeah, you do faster. It as fast as, yeah, yeah. You're just like, you can laugh fucking later. Uh, you can spend the rest of your life laughing at these jokes. I got to get them all out right now. Yeah. And, and the thing if, if somebody like trying to deliberately fuck over the headliner is yeah. when they go long. They go. You know, oh, like I never went long. I'd get my life. Yeah. I do. I was on the road doing I would close and this would I, I'm ashamed to say crush. <laughs> I would someone do has to say it. And I think and I believe you an impression of a penis trying to talk a woman out of not using a condom. And yeah, you, it was adorable. Even you can't follow that. Yes. Uh, it was adorable. <laughs> and then it would end falling asleep because, it, I mean, Tim, Tim Wilson. That does sound adorable. Tim Wilson goes, God damn, girl. You know, who he was a great comic, you know. Yeah. And it was, it was like, you know, it was a, it was a good road closer. Oh, let me tell you. That, it sounds like an it amazing was a good one. road closer. <laughs> I used to do this thing about uh, this, this uh, v- vagina t shirt joke that I used to do about yeah. how. Um, it was, I would close because I got a massage and it got to whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and so, and then it was super, it was relatively. It got too close to your vagina, the massage. Yeah. the It was in my vagina. And I was like, that's where I keep my vagina. And then, uh, and then. <laughs> Yours folds in on itself like origami. That's nice. <laughs> and then some people were like, you got to sell that shirt. And I was like, no, no, no. I'm never selling. That's where I keep my vagina t-shirts or, <laughs> or whatever. And, uh, and so that I closed because on the road, you do want to close with almost the dirtiest thing that you've oh, yeah. got because you can't follow your own best dick joke. Yeah. Nobody can, which is why the MC has to come up a little sorbet, little palate yes. cleanser and then bring up the headliner. And yeah. And then the headliner has to start. Can't like you've, you've, you've ended on your talking penis or right. your, your, your put vagina, away vagina that. <laughs> Uh, the, the headliner then has to start from zero with I was at Starbucks today or my yeah. kids, and then they have to build up to their sex to closer. their sex closer. Exactly, so it's a it's a ride for the audience. It's super fun. That always ends like, in sex. Woo! And then yeah. oh, and now we're gonna go back. And, yeah, yeah, and now yeah, tick, yeah. Tick, 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 tick. You tick can't up open the... on sex, or that's no. all you're gonna do, basically. Right. If, and thing. if that is all you're gonna do, you better be able to sustain it. That's a forty five minute uh, blowjob or whatever. <laughs> it's, it's, and, but I've done you, those w- once. I've done that once. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah so so when i like when i open for um for regan it's squeaky clean right because yeah. he just doesn't even write those jokes yeah he right, does right, not right, right, right. ever i'm sure he thinks about all the things that we all think he's about. he's a normal man he is a normal human being yes he does not write bodily function jokes he doesn't write sex jokes and he really doesn't curse yeah like even in real life just walking around i'm sure if he hit his thumb he might say fuck yeah but that i haven't it's fun you know it just isn't so i would i would be doing him a disservice and myself a disservice yes. as he would not probably have me back yes but, and the audience wants what they want too yeah and they've you know, come they paid to see a lot him. of money they paid a lot of money to and come a lot of they, people bringing kids they brought their seven year olds yeah some yeah reason. yeah and um but they yeah and it, it and, I, and i want and i always do want the show to go well yeah right of course, i always right, want right. everyone to have a good time at the damn yeah. show because they've they've hired a babysitter you know that you, yeah you yeah do. it's like it's already 75 dollars to leave the house yeah yeah so <laughs> let them have a good time and so and then when i open for maria she's like please try your weirdest newest stuff oh and that's so sweet it is the sweetest it's just awesome because yeah. it's always a mess and I open and close with the with stuff that works, and and but it's just a treat. And her audience is into that. They're totally into that. Uh, they want to hear. Dude, you got the best of both worlds. It is pretty sweet. It's pretty great. And then I get to do. I get the best of all three worlds because then mm-hmm. I get to do my own road work. Yes. And, uh, and people, you know, there's at least twenty two people in every city in the world <laughs> that want to see Jackie Cash. <laughs> so all good. So uh, yeah. What else? What else you want to? Ta- you want to talk about how? 
We have a list we're working off of. Yeah, yeah. We've, by by the way, I've abandoned my uh, – I, I said this on a previous one that you could probably download where I was trying to look young at comedy clubs. So I came up with this oh, yeah. thing where I would only wear one of my contact lenses so that I wouldn't have to wear reading glasses because I'm <laughs> nearsighted. So my left eye, which is useless unless something is three inches in front of it, right. like that one I would read out of my notebook out of. Yeah. And then the right eye would be my driving eye. And you bailed? Yeah, because last week I forgot my left contact completely separate issue, and I had to spend the whole week like that. And I was like, no, this is fucking ridiculous. It, it is. And oh my God. people thought I was, you know, I, I had my iPhone right, like almost my nose was touching the glass. And yeah, yeah, I just look like an ass. And then I just, <laughs> you know, I thought I don't want to embrace it. Yeah, it was like it was like last I think last week I, I talked about how I discovered that probiotics, you could lose weight if you use diuretics. I've decided recently that um I don't want to be sick to lose weight because right. you're sick because essentially you're making yourself sick. And I was like, I can't concentrate if I'm riffing with somebody, but I'm also trying not to shit myself. You know, too much info. But there you go. My la- my dad lost so much weight a year and a half ago. <laughs> he died. OK. Um... I knew. I was like, is there going to be a. He looks so good, you guys. It was just just the clothes. He, well, just hung he looks on thin. Him. He looks yeah. super thin. Yeah. He just looks thin. The way that, uh, yeah, dark, dark. Nice work. Um. So, yeah. So yeah. So what about what about comedy specials? Oh, that's right. Yeah, we were. So gonna... anyway, we're going off. For, oh, that's why yeah. because I can't because now I my special method I didn't bring I I can't see our our list of topics. Right. So I could hold it <laughs> so for I'm you like over you. here. You're, yeah, and, uh, I'm even vain. Uh, on it turns on a po- an audio a, a podcast. I'm very vain. <laughs> right. Uh, so the I don't Aristotle. Want Aristotle to think I'm the age he knows I am because I mentioned it once. We're on the podcast. Nerdist Network, you guys. By yeah. the way, and uh, and uh, Aristotle's bringing it. Oh yeah, he's great. Yeah. Um. So oh yeah. So my special. Okay. So we decided I'm working with um, a, a company that right. uh, that they they work they run the stand ch cringe humor okay and we're gonna add some footage that we have from my dad's actual hospice situation right because you wrote 45 minutes about, uh, oh the the specialist got 45 jokes about my dead dad and all right. it's about 42 minutes long 42 I cut out some of the ones that didn't work fair enough about 75 or 80 jokes fair but right. the whole it was all stand up about cancer death you know grieving Your dad. funeral yeah. my dad blah blah blah. A pain, you know, watching, helping someone die, right. escorting them onto the next And 42 journey. minutes of that. Yeah, basically, yeah. And so, um, you know, to get his comedy special sold. Uh, it's not just stand-up anymore. No, they unless didn't, you're they famous. They didn't like mine. Yeah, yeah they, like is what, uh, what I, I did. I mean, Eliza's was just stand-up. Eliza was it just at a theater? Yeah. Okay. But, you know, she's. She's, She's Eliza, Eliza Schlesinger, yeah. so she won last comic, so yeah. they care more. So if if you're not that, which neither of us are, like not at this time, not for, at this time, and not at this time, you have to. You it's got to be you, really you, special. You got to mix it up. You got to bring something to it. So we're gonna add footage from hospice, you know, of the family taking care of my dad. That sort of uh, complements the jokes I'm telling. Yeah, and then they're gonna put in some of the tweets, that, like maybe text okay. some of the tweets I tweeted during. Going to turn it into kind of a Ken Burns comedy special. I don't. No, I'm sort it's of interested. A... I mean, artistically, I kind of like, was excited by how they were telling me. And then that that vision, they have, you know, there's interest of a couple different places. Right. Oh, that's great. So anyway, I'm yeah, sort because because my special, this will make an excellent Horcrux available mm-hmm. for download at Comedy Film Nerds or <laughs> as a DVD on yes. JackieCation.com. Yes. Uh, it's just straight stand up. It's a club. It's a club set. Yeah. And it's 56 minutes. And I was... I was led to believe that Netflix and those things were – and CISO and Hulu and all yeah. these places were looking for content. That is a direct quote. You can put quotation marks on it. They are, except for that only from famous people and only if it's more interesting. Like Maria's special, special, special. Yeah. Where she per- performed her. to her parents. Yeah. That is a weird – yeah. That's something that's exceptional, right? Yes. So putting this footage, the hospice stuff, I think is going to make it sort of just gives it another depth to it. Yeah. I wish I had known that. I would have, I don't know, gone to uh, Hogwarts in, because uh, it's called <laughs> This Will Make an Excellent Horcrux. I would have gone to Orlando and, and given a shit and bought a scarf, <laughs> a, a Gryffindor scarf. Yeah. Hopefully it'll it'll still oh. work and, uh, you know. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. This is the first episode that's going to drop here on Nerdist, and right. it's going to go, I think, January 4th or 5th or something cool. like that. Where are you working first? Uh, 
for, yeah. first week if people want to come and see you um, do stand up. I that I'm back uh Coming back work? in production, okay, so, so then LA I'll be sets. in LA from the fourth till uh, mid February straight. So okay, so just doing sets. Yeah, that's you crazy. Can find it. On, I'm on Twitter, any Lori sixteen, and I always tweet. You know the stuff I'm doing. So. Right, right, and uh, I'm doing Minneapolis and then Tacoma and then Sketchfest. I'm doing live, uh, that live sounds whatever. Fun. That'll be super fun. And then I don't know. It, it, it's all on, I'm uh, at Jackie Cation on Twitter. Cool. So, and JackieCation.com. dot com. But uh, super fun. Right on, Jackie. We right, talk about comedy, big yeah, one, right? for an hour. That's awesome. You guys could take it. There's a there. There'll be some are some of our earlier uh, attempts, right? Which aren't, which aren't bad. There's some good We're ones. Not in bad. There. There's so some we'll good. load them later, but uh, but this yeah. is this one's tight, you guys. This one's good. It is tight. All right, you're tight. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. Now leaving nerdist.com. 